Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Finally decided it was time to upgrade our builder grade pantry to this custom butler pantry. In this video, I will show you a step-by-step -step guide how I turn my pantry from these wire shelves to this custom butler pantry with custom cabinets and floating shelves. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications to see everything DIY. I will also be posting a detailed blog post as well as a detailed guide on the blog where you can find in the links below. This video will be pretty long because it is a step-by-step -step guide and I try to be as detailed as I could for you all. Here's a quick clip of the guide like I mentioned. It's available on the blog and the link will be down below. Now let's get started on this pantry project. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are actually getting started on our pantry. I joined a one room challenge, which is a six week challenge. So we need to try to finish the pantry in six weeks. Today, all we're doing is taking everything out of the pantry, removing the shelves, and then filling up any holes that need to be filled up. And if I have time, I'll probably do some painting today. So here is a complete before view of the pantry before I removed all the food. Now time to remove all those ugly wire shelves that have no business being in a pantry. All done, removing all the food from the pantry, removing the shelves. As you can see, I have quite a few holes that I have to fill up. What I'm using to patch up all of the holes. Ash, I keep it in this Lowe's bucket so it's easy sand sheet rock 45 and I think the reason why it's called 45 because it takes 45 minutes to dry so I just mix that with water and I have it mixed right here so from everything that I read it says it should be about like toothpaste consistency so I just add water enough water until I see it's like toothpaste. haven't have been removed it's definitely my least favorite thing to do and I accidentally made a hole over here but that's okay because the cabinet that we're building is going to cover all that up good morning it's day two of the pantry makeover as you can see the wall has been patched up i just need to send it down and the baseboards have been removed Flying from town to town, from London to Taiwan, I've been all around the world. Now that we're all done with sanding, it's time to paint the wall. I really wish I had a paint spray at the time, but I didn't, so I just used a roller and paintbrush, which took forever. In order to better visualize my design in the pantry, I decided to go ahead and use some um, painter's tape to outline the entire pantry with the measurements and all that so I can actually see exactly what it will look like. Next, I used 2x4s to build the base of the cabinet. I forgot to take a clip of myself to doing this, but it's pretty easy. You just use the 2x4s and you can either put them together using either um, pocket holes or just regular screws. The base has been all stapled in. The back part, it looks kind of rough right now, but that's okay because we're going to fill this up and it's going to be painted, so that's fine. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm using plastic wood uh, so that I can um, fill all these up right here and sand it down and paint it so that you don't see. So the reason why you see different pieces is because I was trying to use scrap wood because I didn't want to waste wood. I have to buy wood because it's really expensive right now. So that's why you see multiple pieces to make the size that I need. Like I mentioned in the blog post, I've had to do this all over again. I would have just spent the extra money and bought another piece of plywood because as you can see, I created way more work for myself having to fill up the holes and also sanding it down. Like it was a lot of work. So yeah, I definitely next time would just buy another piece of plywood. I'm here and I'm feeling, feeling. It 
exaggerated, that's what you assume. The story's over now, I must. Hey guys, so it's week two of the pantry so far um actually let me turn on the camera to show you guys what i've done so far so so far i've done the base the back of the cabinet and i this is called plastic wood so i said this before but I'll, i think i said it before but the reason that i did this is because i didn't have a piece a plywood piece big enough to fit here and then here and i didn't want to have to buy more plywood because i had scraps of plywood left and this is the back it's going to be painted anyways so I use like plastic wood to fill the seams. I'm going to send this down smooth. And then the corners, actually, I'm going to like caulk the corners. Like in here, I'm gonna put a piece back here and we're gonna caulk the corners since the walls are not straight, so there's a little bit of a gap. The plan for today is to put um, the side parts and the parts that separate. I don't know if that makes sense, like the separating parts here. I'll just show you guys what I'm gonna do because I not making any sense what I'm saying to so the proper term and then um, so basically build the rest of the base of the cabinet I guess and hopefully prime it today and I actually need to cut for this piece. this is gonna be like a tall cabinet so I need to cut the three-quarter inch plywood to the uh, width that I want audio for this was pretty crappy so i decided to just do a voiceover for y'all to explain what i was trying to say here so i made pocket holes both at the top and the bottom of this sheet this is what's going to be the side of the cabinet i wasn't sure if i was going to need both at the bottom and at the top but i did them just in case because once you install this you can't really make pocket holes after and i actually ended up only needing the pocket holes in the bottom which you will see in the next um, couple of videos i will show you how i end up mounting it with just the bottom pocket holes This part right here i'm just showing you all like where this um piece is going to go like i said it's going to be one of the side pieces of the cabinet and i ended up using only the bottom pocket holes for this one to hold it together <laughs> just showing you all progress so i put this in to kind of give more support to the cabinet and i actually was going to use i think it's melanin mdf board but i didn't know this or i didn't realize this that when you add pocket holes to that it split the wood in half so then i found some scraps of um, plywood that i had so i went ahead and used the plywood instead and then for this piece this is going to be the tall cabinet as you can see it looks like it's split in half because it is i did not have a piece long enough for this so since it's going to go against the wall i went ahead and just split it in half and we're gonna kind of fill this up here with some plastic wood. And then on this side, I do have a piece that's long enough that will reach all the way to the top. And if you're wondering why I have the laser right here, it's because this where there, there's a stud right there. And I wanted to drill um, one hole with a screw to hold this like on this one and up here and the rest is nails holding it together. And then there's pocket holes holding it at the bottom. <laughs> Here is an update on the pantry. So as you can see, all of the front frame has been put on all over here. And one thing that I didn't really think about once putting this, but I already put a software or something out, is I'm gonna put shelves over here and I wish that I had trimmed this to fit flush with this. This end right here should have been flush with this end. Because the walls are not straight, it's just, really odd it's not because the opening from here from here to here and the bottom is perfect and the opening from here to here is perfect and the opening and the distance from here to here is also a correct length but from here to here it's not
So here is a pantry update. We're on week three. So the cabinet has been put up and the front frame has been put up. And if I've mentioned this before, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is shorter over here. It's not really on purpose. It's because that's all the wood that I left, the plywood that I left. And I didn't want to buy more plywood. And there's going to be a piece back here anyways, supporting um, the top part. So that's why it looks kind of ugly back here, but you're not going to see it once that piece is up. cabinet is all primed i'm going to do one coat of the paint tonight and let it dry and probably do another coat tomorrow or i might just start on the shelf tomorrow and do the final coat once i'm done with everything completely Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush I have all of my drawer bottoms prime and painted I'm doing four drawers for one side I actually was not planning on painting the drawer bottom But I'm going to show you all now Because each of these different pieces of wood Look different This is the back This is another piece yeah. They each look different because I didn't want to buy more wood when I had scrap that would be good enough So I thought it would not look nice to each have a different piece like the bottom looking different So that's why I decided to go ahead and um, paint it black the same color as the cabinet But the rest of it is gonna be the wood stain Here's a sped up clip of me building the drawers Drawers are pretty easy to build. Honestly, the hardest thing about building drawers is getting your measurements just right to make sure it fits in the frame perfectly. If you want to see more details of how I built the drawers, just make sure to check out the blog post as well as a detailed PDF guide that I made. I have it available on my blog. Both links are in the caption. And also, if you guys want me to do a detailed how to build drawers video, just let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do one for you all. That's all right. Hush. Finally have one drawer in right here. I haven't put the front face of the drawer yet. This was a pain. I think drawers are my least favorite things. Yeah, I don't like drawers. Um, yeah, we don't like them. Maybe we will one day, but we don't like making drawers right now. I wanna taste your content, hold your breath and feel the tension. So today I'll be showing you all how I made the drawer for my pantry for my produce with the dividers. So um, first off, after you're done measuring the size of the drawer that you need based on your cabinet frame, wherever you're putting your drawers, you want to cut everything to size. So I have here my back pieces and my two side panels for four different drawers. After that, ideally you want to go ahead and put your acrylic, um, your poly acrylic clear coat or painted before you build it but I actually only put one coat on one side because I'm on a kind of a time crunch so I'm going to um, put a clear coat when I'm done building them but I did put two coats on one side for all. Once you're done doing that you kind of want to look at all your pieces and decide um, which piece is going to go to which side so I picked the side that doesn't look that great to go on the left side of my drawer because it's facing against the wall on the outside of the drawer so you won't really see it, the, any little scratches. So you want to go ahead and do that and then label everything so I have the right, left, and then this is the back part, which part is going to be right, which is going to be left. And then next, we're going to be building pocket holes. But before you build your pocket holes, you want to grab your drawer slides to make sure that it won't be in the way of the drawer slides. So here is a pair of the drawer slides I will be using. And I want to have um, my drawer slide. So about almost two inches from the bottom part. So I'm gonna use this just to make sure that it's not in the way. This is where my drawer slide is gonna be. So because of that, I want my particles to be over here, up here or down here, and so that it's not in the way of the drawer slide. Because I want all of my pocket holes to be on the outside of the drawer, I'm gonna go ahead and mark those. So it's gonna be on the back of the side and then in the front part to hold the front frame. 
So I only have three sizes now. I don't have the one for the front frame yet because I'm actually doing like a frame with one by two and like perforated metal in the front. It might not make sense now, but I'll show you also. That's why I only have three sides and not four. Where you put your pocket holes will depend on how you're building your doors. So because I am building mine this way, my pockets quilt holes will go over here so it can go in through there. But if you're building your drawers this way, you want your pocket holes right here so the screws can go in there. So just keep that in mind. Just mark everything because I've accidentally done pocket holes in the wrong place and end up with extra holes that were unnecessary. As you can see here, I'm just marking with tape everywhere that I want to make pocket holes to make sure I'm not making any un unnecessary holes. because I wanted my pocket holes to look uniform you see how they all pretty much look like they're about in the same spot on all of them I aligned the edge of the wood to this and I used this pocket hole on um, this hole right here and I did the same thing on the other side I aligned the edge of the wood to the pocket hole um, maker and then I used this hole right here that way they all look pretty uniform now that I have the bottoms of all of my drawers cut I'm gonna go ahead and make pocket holes I went and labeled which part are gonna be the bottom, so the part that looks kind of the worst is what I'm making the bottom. And then very important when you're making pocket holes, because that has happened to me before, don't forget to switch out with the drill bit, um, the length or the thickness of the wood that you're using. So I was doing one inch before, so I had it at three quarters, now I'm doing half an inch plywood, so I'll make sure to move it to half an inch. And what I like about this one, everything is here. You can grab it. Twist this off, move it, and then just put it back right here because I lose everything, so this is awesome. So after putting the front frame together, it was time for me to use my router to make a groove where the edge of the sheet of the metal will be on because that's I suck at making sure the router goes in a straight line I made myself a guide just which is clamping some scraps of wood to the edge of my workbench to make sure that the router is going on a straight line so the drawer fronts I made them um, using 1x2 select pine you can see the details of how I made them in the blog post and also in the detail guide I have available and I linked both of them below <music> So here I'm showing you all how to not cut the sheet of metal. I thought these metal colors would be good enough to cut through the sheet of metal, but no, the metal ended up bending way too much and just ended up with a really sore hand. So once the, this metal bends, it's really hard to make it straight again. So the next day I ended up going to Home Depot and got a cutoff tool instead. So the cutoff tools do come with different discs, so make sure you're using the one that's used for metal and you will probably need more than one, so while you're there, just grab a couple extras as well. I forgot to take a video of me using the cutoff tube, but this is what the cutoff tube looks like. To mount the front frame to the drawers, I went ahead and used wood glue and the pocket hole screws. Then once I was done with that, I set them aside to dry. So I'm currently putting the front of these drawers right here. So this is what the front looks like and then the back, the back is not very pretty, but it works. So I ended up using half an inch screws to hold it in place. And that's what it looks like on the inside part, but you don't really see it when you open the drawer. So I wanted to show you all a tip on how I was able to space out my drawers. So I, depending on what the size is, but I went with a, quarter inch plywood scrap that I had 
you can see like this stuff right between these two drawers. So I basically put it right here and then I grab my drawer front and put it right here. I put it where I want it to be and then I grabbed a pencil to trace the inside of the drawer front like right here on the side. I already did this already but I'll show you how it looks like right here and on the side. And once I do that, this is what it looks like. Let's see, this corner and that corner and then I will align the drawer to this. So I just put one shelf up, I'm about to put the other one. This is how I use what I used to put it up. These pieces of scrap wood that I had, they were actually one by two pieces that I cut in half and painted three sides. You know, this has to go on the back so it needs to be painted and I painted three sides and that's what I'm using to hold up these shelves. And this is what the shelf cleats will look like once it's mounted with the screws. Today I'm finally going to cut out the top for the cabinet. I had originally um, cut out some a top already, but it was half in about like one inch thick. But I found one that's about like a one and a half, close to two inch thick for the counter top. I thought it would look nicer. Because the walls are not 100% straight, I went ahead and made a template for the countertop using five millimeter plywood and my glue gun. Once the countertop is cut to the correct size, it's time to stain it and apply the clear coat. So I wanted my countertop to look like oak without the price of oak. So after lots of trial and error, I found the perfect stain combo to use on pine, which is a lot cheaper than oak. And I will be sharing the details step by step and everything I use for this stain and link it below, which will you'll also find it in my blog post. And let me know if you guys want me to do a video on it too. This is what it looks like with the stain. So once it's all dry, I added three coats of polyacrylic to protect it. This is really important to do so that way it won't get damaged by any liquid. So now I'm finally about to secure the countertop. So I got some one by twos and I ripped it to the length that to the width that I needed with my table saw and I added these as well on here. So I'm actually gonna screw these um, on the countertop from like the bottom. And that's what I'm about to do now. So this is what this looks like. I'm under the counter. This is what it looks like. So I, you know, drilled this is what's in the back and then the top right here. And I did that on this corner too. And then on the other side, which you can't see here. Because the audio of this clip sucks, I'm doing a voiceover so you guys can actually hear what I'm saying. So in this video, I'm showing you all how I made the folding shelf frame. So I did it in two separate pieces because the wall is not 100% straight as I have learned every time I'm doing some DIY in the house. Plus it would also be difficult to get it in the pantry in one piece because it's such a small space that I'm working with. So I attached the pieces together using pocket holes, but you can also do it with just regular screws. You don't really have to do pocket holes. It was just easier for me. And the tip that I wanted to give you all is to make sure that you measure your piece of wood that you need to put it, that you need and put it up against the wall. That way you can mark where the studs are because you wanna make sure that you're mounting this to the stud so that it, that it is actually secure. I mounted the floating shelf brackets using three inch screws and made sure to secure them to the studs because that's very important. You don't want your floating shelf falling down. I 
use my table saw to rip the plywood from my floating shelves. I cut the floating shelves at a 45 degree angle because I wanted the shelves to look seamless. This is definitely harder than just cutting them straight. But if you're able to do it and have a table saw and you have some time to practice, I think it looks so much better this way. So I used a half an inch maple plywood and the reason I went with maple plywood is because it looked a lot nicer than pine and because Take I'm planning on staining it, I wanted a nicer looking plywood. Yeah, she got me reaching still, 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 still. Nothing to stop me falling Who knew that look? The hardest thing honestly about building floating shelves in a pantry is having to dry fit it over and over and over again because the walls are not 100% straight. As you do more DIYs in your house, you will notice that nothing is straight. So because of that, no two pieces will be the same measurement. So you have to keep taking each pieces one by one and dry fit it. And once you can actually get all your pieces to fit, then installing it is a breeze. It's super easy. But here's a tip for you all. Make sure you label every single piece because like I said, not all the pieces are the same size. So as you're dry fitting, make sure you label every single piece so that you can easily put them back and know where they belong when, when you're actually going to start installing them. And you can use um, clamps to hold the pieces together while you're trying to dry fit. Like especially for the bottom piece, I want to see how it looked all in place. So I use clamps just to hold everything together in place. I finally got one shelf cut to fit, well the top part. So there's a little bit of a gap here, but that's okay. I'll add um, Poppy Pocket. But as you can see, everything else fits kind of perfectly. This thing is all off and crooked. The wall is not at a 90 degree angle at all. Finally, I have this side of the shelves, top and bottom cut, and the front is already cut. I just haven't put it up yet. It's actually not put up, it's just being held by these clamps over here. Uh, now I just need to cut this side, and then I'm done with the shelf. Still trying to decide if I want to stain or paint. I haven't decided yet. Once all the pieces were cut and they actually fit, which took me forever because the walls are not straight, really annoying and frustrating, I mounted the plywood to the brackets using my brand nailer. I'm sure you all noticed that the shelves are not stained yet so I decided to stain them after they were mounted to the wall because since I used um, two different pieces and will be using wood fill filler for the seams like you see in the clip it will be nearly impossible for me to match the wood filler to the stain of the rest of the shelf so I wouldn't be able to stain the wood filler for it to match the shelf it would be impossible because I would get more stain on the rest of the wood and it just wouldn't match so because I wanted to look seamless, I decided to go ahead and stain it after I applied the wood filler. So once you put it, you wipe it. Yeah, I'm wiping it with like paper towel that's wet so that you see it's only on the inside. And it's not all over the face and it does like a straight clean line. That's nice, that's nice. It's, it's a nice it is not. I have a big gap right here, I gotta feel. So don't be like me and make sure to remove the tape before mounting the brackets to the wall so you don't have to make your life a lot harder like I did. So for the bottom part of the floating shelf, I used both wood glue and nails just to make sure that it would stick since it's the bottom part. And now you can just watch me struggle trying to put a floating shelf in a very small tight space. Are you okay? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> to add the front part of the shelf, I use the same method that I used to add the top and the bottom. I just use my nail gun and use three quarter nails to nail it in. Just um, make sure you do it carefully because you don't want the nails to pop out from the top or the bottom. So just make sure you go straight and not at an angle. Next, I went ahead and used my sustainable wood filler to fill up all the seams in the corners and the top and the bottom. Once the wood filler was all dry, I went ahead and, and sanded it down with a 220 grit just to smooth everything out. Now once all that was done, I went ahead and stained all of the shelves. Like I mentioned before, I wanted to stain it after I had put the shelves up because I wanted to make sure the seam was the same stain where I used a wood filler. And you can see the details of what I use in the stain. Um, I use like the combination of three different stain and whitewashing, so it's all available on my blog post. And that's it, we're finally all done. I love, love how this turned out. This took us way longer than I imagined it would. I thought I was gonna be able to finish this in eight weeks, but no, I didn't. It took us double the time, but I love how it turned out. It was worth it, every second of it. Even all the headaches and the frustration, I love how my pantry turned out. I'm feeling, feeling exaggerated, that's what you are Thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful and inspirational. And like I mentioned earlier, all of the details are available on the blog. I will link everything below. And the links to everything that I use, the tools, all the materials that I use will also be available. And I also mentioned I have a detailed PDF that's also available on the blog that you can print out to have for you as a guide. Oh, <laughs>